Hello guys, welcome back. This is Rupesh and I'm watching C Minutes video series on C++ and today's topic is polymorphism in C++ and note down that it is very important feature of object oriented programming. So again, this is not only in C++, it is there in almost all the object oriented programming. So you might be wondering what is polymorphism word. So let's break this. Poly means many, morph means forms. Okay, so there are two things involved in one word. So many forms. I know you didn't get anything. Don't worry. I'm there to explain that. So how would you map this many form inside your programming? If I'll tell you in the simple word, then it would be like so many functions with similar name is polymorphism in programming. And that's it. So if it is function and it is taking in teacher, it is different than similar name with function. This is fun and it is taking character. So these two functions are totally different functions, even though name is similar. This is also fun. This is also fun. And similarly, if I will have some another fun without taking any parameter, this is different. And let's suppose if it is taking two different parameters, I mean, integer character, then that is different than rest of these functions. So the meaning is you must be able to distinguish it using the parameters you are passing in. Okay. And yeah, I know you might have think about what would be the written type then. No, you cannot distinguish two different functions only on the basis of return type. Or I should say you should not consider return type. What I mean to say is if you have two functions, one is fun and it is taking integer in that and another one is also fun and it is taking integer. But this one is returning void and this one is returning integer. Then you would say that this is different than this one. But no, this is similar than this one because we distinguish similar function names with their parameters. And remember this, you cannot have similar function name with similar parameters. So here you can see that both are function and taking integer. So this is not allowed. So this was the basic understanding what is many form or polymorphism in C++ or object oriented programming. This example is more or less suitable for compile time polymorphism. There are two types. A is compile time polymorphism. B is runtime polymorphism. So you might have seen that function overloading and overriding if you're following my videos and coming through the full playlist. So yeah, these two things are forms of compile time polymorphism. So let's take the example and we'll understand better. So I'll quickly write the code for you. So here is the function. One is taking integer and another one is taking double. So let's create the object of this test class. Let's call it T1. And if you will call T1 and then function and you're passing some integer value here, let's make it 10 or something and just compile this. You can see that it is calling integer function. No point of printing X and also I won't be printing that. And let's do the same thing with this function. And this time let's pass double value. So double could be 10.5 or 10.0. Let's make it 10.5 and compile it again. See, first one is calling this one and another one is calling this one. I mean this one. So you can easily see that with the similar function name, you actually can call the different different functions. So it is possible. And let's see how it is possible then. Actually, whenever you are writing something like this, then compiler will see, okay, what is the best match for this function to be called? So it is T1. So test is a class and I should look into that. So it will find two functions with the same name, fun and fun. Now it will see, okay, 10 is an integer value. Is it taking any integer value? Yes, this one is taking integer value. Then I should call this function. So when you're compiling and this particular function will go into some memory area, it will write that particular memory area address and it will pass this 10 here. That's why it is called static 
binding also let me write that this is also called static binding and this one is called dynamic binding or you call it lazy binding there are so many names for them but they all are actually talking about the runtime polymorphism and yeah if it is lazy binding then this should be early binding early binding so these are the names for actually telling the same thing yeah so we were talking about this one so you understood that how this will actually call this one and how this one is going to call this one so this is the example of function overloading and one more time what is function overloading when there are multiple function with the same name function function but the different parameters here it is integer and here it is double then these functions are overloaded and this feature is not there in C it is there in C++ only because it should be object oriented programming don't miss that so we have seen function overloading now let's look at the function sorry operator overloading for that I would need a different class so let me write that one so here is the class we'll call is complex and complex means we'll have real and imaginary in that so this is a complex number so it has real and imaginary and here is the constructor for that we won't be taking any value then it will be initialized with zeros so this is default as well as parameterized constructor which I always prefer because you don't have to write two constructors default and parameterized you can actually club them into one and here is the example of our interest we wanted to see operator overloading and this is overloaded and we are overloading plus operator so let's do that complex c1 and this will have one comma three and let's have another one c2 and let's make it two comma five and assign them into something else then let's make that c3 is equal to c1 plus c2 okay so you know that here it will call this particular function and if you don't know why it is calling this and how it is calling this I have a separate video for that that is called operator overloading in C++ I have a full playlist for that please go ahead and watch that playlist you will be very clear about what is operator overloading topic in C++ and for now I'll tell you that this C1 is a calling object and this C2 is going as a parameter here and we magically ended up calling this one if you don't know this so this expression will call this one and we are adding two things here you can see that and returning the result and assigning that result here so we can just simply print that result by calling c3 dot show okay so let's compile this okay so you ended up adding two complex numbers one with two is resulted as three and this three and five is this one so this was the example of operator overloading i can go and overload minus operator and all sort of operators but this is sufficient just to give the example here so we have seen function overloading operator overloading let's move to the runtime polymorphism this is very interesting so let me remove all these things and we'll see that let me write the program for that and let's keep it little simple we will have only base and derived which will derive base and we'll have public void function and here also we'll have void function and let's make this base and here it will be derived and let's make this one also public okay now listen to me when you go for runtime polymorphism in C and sorry C++ then in that case you can achieve runtime polymorphism either using reference or pointer you cannot achieve this without reference and pointer what I mean to say is you have to use base pointer B is equal to new derived and if you will call this now wait a minute I know it is not going to call derived let's compile this and it is calling base so still this is static binding we have not included virtual here 
Until unless you include virtual functions, there is no runtime polymorphism. I wanted to show you that. Now I want to show you how you will do that. So virtual keyword will be added here. So you want to make this function virtual in all derived classes. It means B is a base pointer, but it is pointing to derived class. So if you are calling some function and if that function exists in derived class, then the idea is it should call that function. But in order to achieve that thing, you must have to have this virtual keyword associated with this function in base class, not in derived class. I'll show you the difference here. Let's compile this. See now it is printing derived. So this is what our intention was and we have achieved it. I'll repeat again. This is base pointer, but it is holding derived object, not its own object. So logically, if you are calling this function, which is there in base and derived both, but it is pointing to the derived object. So we will expect it to be calling to the derived class only. And we have achieved it using virtual here. And I said, you have to use virtual here, not here. So let's do that. And yeah, one more thing. You can put virtual here as well as here. No worries. But there is no need of doing that because your compiler is so intelligent that it will see that, okay, this function is here as well as here and it is virtual here. So I have to consider this function as a virtual. Okay. So let's compile this again. See, it is giving the same output. So no need to write virtual here. Okay. I'll just remove that. Okay. And one more time, if we will remove this one, let's do that. Then it won't call function, which is inside derived. Let's compile and verify that. See, it is calling base. So in order to achieve this runtime polymorphism, you must have a virtual function here like this. Then only you can achieve runtime polymorphism. And this is called function overriding, which is achieved using virtual functions. And there are two types of virtual function. One is pure virtual function. Another one is normal virtual function. So if you are looking for that video, I'll create another video for that. But let's not mix up two things. So you have seen that how it is performed. I have one more point. Let's change this function with some parameter in teacher X. Now what? This is virtual. So if it is virtual, it should call this function, right? So let's compile and check that. No, it is still calling base because now these two functions are totally different functions. Okay. Because it has parameter and this one does not have any parameter. If I will make this one similar, let's make this one integer Y or something. This Y and X doesn't make any sense. The only important thing is this data type and I'll compile this again. Okay. We got some error. Okay. I didn't pass anything here. Okay. So let's pass one compile again. See now it is calling derived. Okay. So now these two functions are similar. So can you smell one problem here? Yes. I'm going to tell that problem. That problem is even though your function name is looking similar and you are thinking that, okay, I am overriding this function here, but you may or may not override because you have some different parameters for this. So what I mean to say is you can have integer X here and you may have some double X here. So in this case, these two functions are different functions and you will not be able to call derived functions even though you're pointing to the derived one. Okay. So let's try that. If you will call 1.5 and it should call this one because we have virtual, but it won't call that. See, it is calling base one. Understood? So this is the problem. Now we know that. So what is the solution for this problem? The solution is we have one keyword called override. And if you will use this, it will explicitly check that this particular function prototype exists in base class or one of the base class. Because this is a very simple example. It can have multiple and multi-level inheritance. In that case, it will check in every class whether I'm getting this kind of functions prototype or not. So if it is not getting that, it will give the error. So let's compile that and we'll get the error here. 
yeah you can see that it is telling a uh, hidden overload virtual functions base declare type mismatch first parameter yeah see type mismatch happened because it is telling that first parameter is integer versus double okay so there is a type mismatch and actually this is a note this is not a war error the error is non virtual member function marked override hides virtual member function so it is hiding that so we can make this one also virtual and compile this and see that what is the error error is fun marked override but does not override any member function exactly this is what we were looking for okay so i kind of think that if you are writing override you must have this function name as virtual otherwise it will give that weird message i'm not sure about that message i have not come across that ever anyways this is what we were looking for compiler have told you that dude you was thinking that you are overriding this one but you are not overriding this one so let's make it integer now and pass some integer value let's make it 10 so we are passing 10 and this is also integer this is also integer and we are saying that i am overriding it and let's compile this again okay now it is printing derived it means before we did some mistake we thought that okay both are same function and mistakenly we did this double here and we wanted to be so sure that we are overriding this function so we wrote override here and this is the solution for our problem that what if mistakenly we are not overriding but we wanted to override so always keep this in your mind that if you are intend to override some function always write this override keyword here and this is the syntax for writing that and that's it this is how you achieve run time polymorphism in c++ and yeah i told you that you can implement using pointers as well as reference so let's make it using reference so if it is reference i have to use this reference and then we have to refer some object here so in that case we need derived d and we will refer that d here and we should be calling using b dot so this is the object of derived class and we are referring inside base class and base is not a pointer so we won't be using that arrow now let's compile this okay we got some error here exactly i forgot that i have created it double here and this is how you get the actual message okay so this is just because of this override keyword here let's compile this again see derived so we are able to call this derived if we are pointing to the derived okay so it is possible only with references and pointers so we have covered almost everything here and don't ask me how it actually does there is a magic behind this something called virtual table and virtual pointers i'll cover those topics in different videos if you are not sure what are those things i'll be creating a detailed video for that wait for that video and thanks for watching this video i'll see you in the next videos bye bye